Hey guys, Professor Bell, Comic Book University. I'm reading Mighty Man, issue number one. Now, this is a Image Comics imprint, and uh, let me just tell you. Basically, you've seen these characters before if you've read Savage Dragon. I mean, just from the very beginning to the very end. And they do have a Savage Dragon cameo in here, which is nice. Which is nice. The problem with this comic is, I guess, the comic itself. The art is very cartoony, like a little bit too cartoony. The writing is very tropey. The characters themselves have always, always been tropey. They're all just copies of other characters that have already existed in mostly the Marvel Universe, but every so often the DC Universe, too. Mighty Man, in and of herself, yes, Mighty Man is actually a little girl. And you, I'm sure you probably know the story. If you're looking at this at all, you probably already know the story of Mighty Man. And if you don't, don't worry about it. Read this comic. You will know the entire history of the character of Mighty Man and the powers and everybody who's had it for the most part all throughout history. Um, when push comes to shove, eh, <laughs> you know, and you got, yeah, the Super Patriot is in here training Mighty Man, who, Mighty Man itself is just a version of Captain Marvel from Fawcett Comics, or, you know, Shazam from DC Comics, same character-ish. Anyway, it's just, it's a, the power of a Mighty Man, a Superman-type character who has been infused into that of a little girl instead of a little boy this time. Yeah, that makes this so original. Savage Dragon, of course, which has always been a version of the Hulk and Aquaman, I guess. Just now, the Hulk with the fin on his head. And Super Patriot, gee, can you guess who that is? Minus the shield. And just all the silly little characters who are in here who just... I've never really gotten into Image Comics. I just... I haven't. And I know there are a lot of people who are going to be like, you know, but Bill... Yeah, I know. I know. Anyway... Never been a huge fan. I, I want to check this out. And it's just so tropey from the beginning to the end. I, I kind of tried to go back and read it again. I couldn't get past the first four pages reading it a second time. I tried to go back again, though, simply for the sake of trying to read it as one of those comics that's so bad it's good. I just couldn't find the good part. It was really just that week. And I'm so sorry to all of the people who invested time into this. Because, uh, I'm just going to say bad things. I'm giving this comic an F+. Plus. I'm giving it an F+, an F plus because it is another comic book company. They are trying to do things. It'd just be nice if they tried to do good things. I don't know. Just Is this really the best that they can do? Because it's just so... I've always found Image Comics to be so campy. And if they were trying to go for that, in the very beginning at least, okay, maybe. But it's just... Everything just doesn't work in this comic. They, they, they keep on trying to push the danger zone, the danger zone, which is obviously supposed to be a version or a callback to the danger room for the X-Men. Uh, just, uh, just, they keep on saying the words in the beginning. They keep on referring to it so that it'll get stuck in our heads. Yes, it's stuck in my head now. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. But I swear to God, if one time they would have mentioned a highway that led to the Dater Zone, I would have gotten in a freaking F-16 and done a flyby and buzzed all the guys in Image Comics and made them drop their coffee all over themselves. But, oh, this is just horrible. Horrible comic, and this should never have seen the light of day. Sorry, as rude as that sounds, it sucks. All right, guys, Preston Bell, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.